Hello everyone. In this episode, we are going to talk about the concept of the self from the perspective of a Sufi master. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, the All Compassionate, the All Merciful. We have been um, examining Sheikh Mahmoud Shabestari's Golshan Raz, the Rose Garden of Mystery, for some time now, and you're very familiar with his thought. Recently, uh, I have been focusing my research on the concept of the self from his perspective. It took me a year to decode what he's saying. Uh, we published it uh, recently, so in this episode, I'm going to present my findings in that paper. Who is I, or what is I? Does I refer to the soul, to the body, or something else? What does Sheikh Mahmoud Shabestari, the 7th to 8th century Iranian Sufi, has to say about this? What is the nature of his account? Is it philosophical or mystical? Who am I? What is the human self? In this episode, we're going to examine this closely. Let me give you a brief a biography of um, Sheikh Mahmoud Shabestari. Shabastari was an Iranian Sufi. Uh, he lived from 7th to 8th century Hijri in a town in Shabastar that is very close to Tabriz. It, it is still uh, populated even today. In the year 717, he was in a gathering with his master and his uh, fellow scholars and Sufis. So um, a mystic from Khorasan, whose name is Amir Hosseini Heravi, sends him a letter sends him a messenger with a letter. In that letter, there are certain philosophical and mystical questions that he asks to Shabastari. But to show his literary potency, he writes all these questions in poetry, in Farsi. Um, so the messenger comes, asks the questions. Shabastari first refuses to answer, saying that, well, we have already answered these questions in our books, in our, uh, in our writings. But the messenger insists that they want a poetic response. So in that gathering, he writes the answers quickly, shortly, in that letter, and sends it back. After the gathering, his master insists that he write a book and extend his answers, and he does. And therefore, we have Golshan uh, Raz, or the Rose Garden of Mystery in which he answers all these questions. And what makes this book fascinating is that he answers everything in poetry. Philosophy, um, mysticism, Sufism, like their content is uh, quite, quite tough and uh, it takes some energy to even decode uh, even the simplest sentences that you're speaking, let alone trying to uh, express them as poetry. So this is a magnum opus in that, in that regard. Um, it is filled with principles of Sufism, and even today there are, uh, it is ex studied extensively. There are more than 50 translations, annotations, commentaries. So uh, in the paper that I have uh, co-authored, uh, we have been using five, six commentaries, the top ones, Laheji, Ibn Turki, Esfahani, Da'i Shirazi, and Sabzawari Khurasani, and Dezfulyan. Um, so what we did was to first derive Shabastari's account of the self, what is human self. Then we put this in the context of uh, Sufi literature, especially in the context of Ibn Arabi's thought. We put it in the context of the Quran to see how it fits. Um, in this video, I'm going to be presenting uh, the main points and I will walk you through the journey that Shabestari presents in this book, to find the human self. So many people have asked me to first recite the poem in Farsi. Um, so they have a sense of the original language and the uh, rhythm and the beauty of the, 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 the poetry from Shabestari. So I, I will be first doing that, and then we will be analyzing it together. So this is the question Heravi asks, Ke man maro az man khabar kun? که باشم من مرا از من خبر کن چه معنی دارد اندر خود سفر کن 
Who am I? Inform me of me. Of what meaning is to have a journey in me? This is uh, Shabastari's answer. دگر کردی سوال از من که من چیست مرا از من خبر کن تا که من کیست شو هست مطلقایت در اشارت به لفظ من کنند از وی عبارت حقیقت که از تعیون گشت معین تو او را در عبارت گفته ای من من و تو آرز ذات وجودیم مشبک های مشکات وجودیم همه یک نوردان اشباه و ارواح که از آینه پیدا گه ز مصباح تو گوی لفظ من در هر عبارت به سوی روح می باشد اشارت چو کردی پیشوای خود خرد را نمی دانی ز جز به خیش خود را برو ای خاج خود را نیک بشناس که نبود فربهی مانند آماس من و تو برتر از جان و تن آمد که این هر دو ز اجزای من آمد به لفظ من نه انسان است مخصوص که تا گویی به دانجان است مخصوص یکی ره برتر از کون و مکان شو جهان بگذار و خود در خود جهان شو زخط وحمی حاو های هویت دو چشمی می شود در وقت رویت نماند در میان ره رو و راه چه های هو شود ملحق به الله بود هستی بهشت امکان چو دوزخ من و تو در میان مانند برزخ چو برخیزد تو را این پرده از پیش نماند نیز حکم مذهب و کیش همه حکم شریعت از من و توست که آن بر بسته جان و تن توست تعیون نقطه وهمی است بر عین چو عینیت گشت صافی غین شد عین دو خود وح پیش نبود راه سالک اگر چه دارد او چندین محالک یک از های هویت در گذشتن دوم صحرای هستی در نوشتن در این مشهد یکی شد جمع و افراد چو واحد سارین در عین اعداد تو آن جمعی که عین واحد آمد تو آن واحد که عین کسرت آمد کسی این سر شناست کو گذر کرد now, um, this is um, the central part uh, that I have examined in, in this paper, um, to, together, of course, um, with other parts of the Rose Garden Mystery and Shavistari's other books, uh, other works, especially Saadat Nome. To, because the, the subject is quite technical, I will be presenting it using a PowerPoint presentation. The video and the paper will make more sense to you, the scholars of philosophy, mysticism, Sufism, and religion. Let us now decipher what Shabestari is discussing here. Now, uh, the title of the paper is A Journey in Search of I, the Self in Shabestari's Rose Garden of Mystery. The name of the book in Farsi like reads as Golshan Eroz, and this is how it is uh, written in Farsi. Now, the objectives of the self part of the paper, because the paper is quite extensive, it has two parts. I will be creating two separate videos, one for the self part, the other for a concept, a misunderstood concept called Fana uh, Fillah or uh, Annihilation in God. Yeah, but that is going to be a separate video. In this video, we are talking about self alone. So my aim is to shed light on the metaphysical position of the self in Shabistari's Golshan. It, it, my aim is to contextualize Shabistari's uh, conceptualization of the self in Islamic thought. It is to explore how this understanding can aid the modern person present Shabastari's concept of the self by examining Golshan in the context of commentary, secondary sources, and Islamic thought, particularly Sufism and uh, philosophy. And lastly, to present opposing interpretations and reasons for the most prominent interpretations. So the paper's thesis is this. What is the self? This is, this is the answer. The self is the human's fixed entity, i.e. quiddity or Ainithabita, plural Ayanathabita, whose aptitudes are eternally unfolding. It is an eternal becoming of the perfect man. What does this becoming mean? We will discuss. The self is not reified, i.e., it is of no definite content or form. The self is not reified or fully known. It changes every moment. It is the ever changing eye of the moment. So this is the thesis. Let's see how we get to this conclusion and what it means. Uh, concerning the literature gap, uh, well, most of the work that has been um, put forth about uh, Golshan Raz 
mostly, not all, are um, about literature aspect, about literary aspect of, of the work. They usually do not critically examine the philosophical and mystical concepts. That's why um, uh, it motivated me to turn my focus to, uh, my research's focus to Gosh and Raz. And um, one surprising factor was that uh, there is no paper examining I, the self, in this great work. That's why I wrote this paper. Now, um, about the technicality. There is a concept called fixed entities or al ayana thabita in Ibn Arabi's mysticism. Uh, we need to have a good understanding of this uh, to, to understand this paper. For Ibn Arabi, the realities of the divine names in God's world of knowledge, in the presence of God's knowledge, is um, what he calls al ayana thabita or fixed entities. In one sense, they are the intelligible forms, but forms not as archetypal or essential forms in the sense that there is really a form like standing up there uh, waiting to be actualized. They are basically the whatness, the quiddity of the corporeal, corporeal existence and um, the realities of the divine names. So two aspects. In one aspect, they are the mahiya or quiddity, the whatness of corporeal existence and in this sense they are non-existent they do not exist whatsoever uh, they do not have external existence or imaginal existence and in another they are the realities of the divine names and we will discuss the rest in detail another important concept the holiest emanation the divine intelligible self-disclosure is called the holiest emanation or al faith al-aqdas uh, it is also called the first determination and universal intellect. What does it mean? Um, God conceives his names and qualities in the presence of his knowledge. And this, that conception, that internal self-disclosure, I'm using the word intelligible with caution here. Um, because saying that God has a mind is not a very accurate term in Islamic mysticism. Um, so he internally um, conceives... His names and qualities uh, and this conception uh, as a result of this conception those uh, the, the, like the realities of those forms appear in his uh, world of knowledge and that is what we call the holiest emanation al faisal aqdas first determination it gives birth to the universal intellect it is the reality of the perfect man as uh, ibn arabi calls uh, al insan al kamil to which he refers to also as the Prophet Muhammad, which is why it is also named the Muhammadan reality. The realities of the perfect man is a mirror on which the real contemplates all his names and where all the hidden perfections of the divine names are actualized. This is why uh, we have this prophetic setting, a saying, a hadith, one who knows his self knows his Lord, because the human reality is where all the names and qualities are manifested and all the realities are hidden and um, they're accessible and human and human alone is the only created being that has this capacity to encapsulate to manifest all the names and qualities other creatures have a limited number of uh, manifestations the second emanation is what is called al faith al-muqaddas or is the sacred emanation um, so we said that God internally conceives all his names and qualities. Now, in the second steps, the second step, and this is not a temporal spec, uh, step, of, of course, he manifests the principles and effects of the fixed entities, the ayana thabata, that is the realities of divine names and qualities, into the corporeal form. So he actualizes the principles and effects. That's why I was emphasizing that the fixed entities or ayana thabita do not have a special form in his knowledge. It is their principles and effects that is reflected unto this world. So God's light passes through the fixed entities and taking up their principles and effects appears as a corporeal world. So the created world is like a second mirror for divine contemplation. God in Ibn Arabian thought, cre created the world to contemplate the external form of his names and qualities. So in this sense, because human um, 
reflects, contains, encapsulates all the realities of divine names and qualities. The human is a microcosm that mirrors the macrocosm because all the realities are contained in his reality. So whatever there is in the cosmos, there is the reality is already in human being. Thus, microcosm mirroring macrocosm, macrocosm being the world. So there are lots of um, common themes between Islamic metaphysics, especially, especially medieval Islamic metaphysics and Neoplatonism. Um, I, I cannot like open them up here, but generally they are very similar in terms of creation because they, they are bo both emanationist traditions. Uh, they are similar in terms of intelligible entities, divine emanation and permeation in the world. Um, if you want to check this, I have written this book like uh, extensively dealing with this matter. Uh, please refer to this. I cannot open them up here. But there is a very significant difference between these two traditions. And the difference is the role of divine names in creation. So um, just to repeat, we said God internally conceives his names and qualities. And then the effects and principles of, of, of those uh, fixed entities appear, appear in the corporeal form. Now, as you can see, the, like, the divine names play a crucial role here. Basically, they are the tools through which creation comes to be. We do not see the roles of divine names in, uh, in, in, in Neoplatonism as it is in Ibn Arabi and, and Islamic thought. So this is a crucial difference between the two traditions. Now... About divine names from the perspective of Shabastari. Shabastari has this poem. He says, Azan ismand mojudat qa'im, bidan ismand dar tasbih da'im. Existence subsists by, the, by that name. They incessantly worship God by that name. Be mabda har yuki zammastari shud, be wakht baz gashtan chun dari shud. In the beginning, each name became an originating point. In return, each became a door. So the first line is pointing to the close relationship between the divine names and our corporeal forms. So whatever being is in this world relates to divine names. Um, and here in this beautiful, beautiful line, um, he's saying that, look, in the beginning, each name became an originating point. That is, through the, the, through the manifestation of the fixed entities, which are the realities of divine names and qualities, the corporeal beings appeared. So they were the originating point. And in return, they will become like doors to which the beings return. So we will discuss this extensively in the um, annihilation video. But uh, what happens, the theme is he here is this. In the annihilation is in God, uh, there is this misunderstanding that uh, everything perish absolutely and essentially. That is not the case. When, when the human in his or her spiritual journey reaches the essence, they do not essentially perish. It is their created being that it perishes, but their fixed entity remains. That is exactly what Shabastari is saying here. He said, in return, each became a door. So in return, the created being disappears, perishes, is annihilated. And what remains is the fixed entity. Now, divine names and human being. Concerning the human creation, God breathed his spirit, giving human the aptitude to receive all divine names. This is Ibn Arabi speaking. Um, we have this chronic root for this. It says, That is, I, I, God, like breathed my spirit into Adam. So that's why they say the human soul is divine. Ibn Arabi uh, translates, interprets this uh, divine breath as God giving the human the aptitude the potential to receive all divine names and qualities. Now, with this mindset, two more lines from Shabastari. He says, That is, you were the image of angels, object of worship. Because of this, you were prostrated. Um, so here, he is pointing to the fact that God gave human his spirit, his um, God breathed his spirit into human beings. So, and the human has the capacity to reflect all, all, all divine names. So the realities of all names are contained within human reality. And because of this, because of this containing, the human is referred to as God's image. Now, there is this chronic reference here. Um, God creates Adam and then he says to angels, prostrate before Adam. 
all of them all of them do accept Satan, but that's a different story. And so Shavastari is saying, look, the angels saw their Lord's image in the human being. That's why they prostrate before Adam. They saw the realities of the divine names and qualities in Adam. That's why they prostrated. از آن دانسته ای تو جمله اسما که هستی صورت عکس مسمى you are the form of the image of the named that is why you know all names so basically a paraphrase um, so it's saying that you are the form of the divine names that you reflect and contain the divine names that is why you know all names this again is in reference to Quran after God says the angels prostrate before Adam they protest saying well we are we are better than better than human being we have been worshiping you for a long time human can shed blood we do not god says i know something that you know not then this is the quranic passage then god asks angels uh, to you name all the divine names and they are unable to do so um saying that we only know the names that you have taught us he turns to adam asking him to name all names and he does so this is uh, there has been lots of interpretation but in, in a mystical uh, view of these lines what we have is uh, basically it was an existential matter here not only epistemic but also an existential um, we said that human is the only being that reflects all, all the names and qualities so in their essence Angels do not have that capacity. God referred to their capacity, saying, look, we have a limited capacity. But human's nature is infinite. That is why he knows all names. He, Adam. And that, Shavastari says, is because of uh, the fact that he is the image of the divine. That's why he knows all names. Then, um, a very uh, complicated verse this is talking about the origin the universal intellect observe your origin carefully which became the mother's father and mother again this explanation is honestly too much for this presentation please read the paper i, I encourage you to read this section this is a very interesting discussion about the universal intellect and um, the origin you can find it uh, through this line now, the central part, the part that I promised, so far everything has been introduction. Uh, the self. This is the question that the Khorasani mystic asks Shabastari. Who am I? Inform me of me. Of, my, of what meaning is to have a journey in me? An introduction to the concept of self. The nature of the self, or I, is a long debated question often examined in the domains of philosophy, mysticism, and psychology. However, while psychology often studies the behavior of the human eye, philosophy and mysticism investigate the nature of not only the human eye, but also the celestial eye. The psychology, the modern psychology, is not engaging with this celestial eye and only uh, focusing on the behavioral part. So it remains to philosophy and mysticism to examine this uh, celestial eye. Shabistari's view of the self. Now, uh, in Shavistari's view, Shavistari is um, speaking shortly because, uh, after all, it's poetry, symbolically and at times vaguely. So he says, I is not limited to just the soul and body. I is the determined real. But what does that mean? He doesn't explain. So that's the problem. And many of the commentators do not bother to explain this. What is determined real? Well, determined, determined real could be universal intellect, determined real could be something imaginal something in corporeal form a tree could be called a determined real in the emanationist perspective so which one which one is i because after all shavastari says i does not refer to even the human alone it refers to all other beings as well that's why it motivated me uh, to, to to investigate this matter and wrestling for a year with the book and the commentary commentaries i uh, got to the conclusion that i will um, discuss shortly in a poem, Shabistari says, When the absolute being becomes the object of reference, it is referred to as I. Again, determined real. But which determined real? The reality that is determined, you have called I. Again, determined real. Poetry, not explanatory. 
Now, uh, this is this, there, there could be a misunderstanding here. One may read Shabastari's definition as I is the real in a pantheistic sense. This is an erroneous interpretation, I have said. True, ontologically, there is nothing other than the real. However, each level of existence is a manifestation of the real, not the real himself in a pantheistic sense. I, as a determined limited reference, does not refer to the undetermined unlimited essence of the real. The determined real is different from undetermined real. Determined real is the essence limited by names. Hence, Sabastari says the reality that is determined you have called I. Other parts of Golshan also confirmed this. Uh, like uh, there is this beautiful passage. He says, "Mano to meshkati wujudi." You and I are the predicates of the essence of existence. We are the fissures in the existence's niche of light. Well, other than the discussion we are having here, there is something uh, also very philosophical here. He says, you and I are the predicates of the essence of existence. There is a long debate. Some people say uh, existence is subject and quiddities are predicates. Others say, no, quiddities are subjects and existence is predicate. So this is a long-lasting uh, philosophical debate. I cannot open this up here, it's too technical. Uh, please read the section uh, related to this, this line in the poem if you are interested. Now, unfolding the nature of the self. In Arabic, nafs is usually referred to as soul or self, and ruh refers to spirit. Despite this distinction, soul, self, and spirit may sometimes be used synonymously. According to the Quran, chapter 18, verse 85, the self is unknowable to human beings. This unknowability is also seen in, other, in, in Islamic mystical and philosophical writings. For example, Ibn Arabi's writings is rife with this unknowability. Now, some passages from uh, William Chittick is going to help us here. He says, the word nafs in Arabic and self in English refer to everything that we are, and that includes both our physical body and our awareness of the self and others. Well, what we are is affected by all the happenings and changes in our lives. Thus, each I is in the process of unfolding, and what is being unfolded is simply our self, adds Chitik, and it is unknown because at every moment of existence, we are something new. So what is our self? It is the I of the moment, and each moment is new. This is a fascinating passage. Uh, this is going to help us greatly in conceptualizing uh, Shavastari's self. And um, you will see it's in the reference of the paper, but uh, this, this is the book Introduction to Sufism by William Chittick. Now, uh, this should be familiar to Ibn Arabi readers, the discussion we just have, because uh, we just had, uh, because uh, in Ibn Arabi's metaphysics, the real is in an eternal self-disclosure, the overflow of the essence, the light that is spreads through diverse beams, which are his names. The names are eternal, as are the uninterrupted manifestations, i.e. possible beings. Because the names are eternal, the manifestations are also uninterrupted and eternal. Now, putting these two together, the eye of the moment that Chichik discusses and, and Ibn Arabi discusses, and the eye that Shabastari points to in Godsan, which he defines as the determination of the essence, is a face among the eternally manifesting unrepeated faces, i.e. manifestations, of the real. Nevertheless, in speaking of the human self, we should not point to a particular thing. We should not make the self something it is not, something referential or reified. The self is everything the human being is. It is unfolding, overflowing, and changing every moment. Chittik puts it perfectly. The self is the eye of the moment. Not reified because the self is an eternal process of changing, progressing on its perfection journey towards becoming the perfect man and unity. Why a perfect man and unity we will discuss. Therefore, the thesis of this paper, the self is the human's fixed entity, ainithabita, quiddity, with its aptitudes, potentials, perpetually unfolding, the entity that is becoming the perfect man. Now, um, let's talk about that becoming part. Uh, remember uh, this assertion, the self is the human's fixed entity that is becoming the perfect man. So there could be an objection here saying that, well, ambiguity clouds the ending part. 
about the word becoming the perfect man. Uh, perfect can mean, in this passage, can be read as either a process or a goal. Like you become perfect, therefore it is a process, or you aim to become perfect as it is a goal. So uh, which one, a critic might say? So the critic would say, in the first sense, I am a perfect man. In the second sense, the critic says, I am on a journey to become a perfect man. Since the journey is endless, in the second sense, I am not a perfect man and will never be one because the journey is endless. Now, this objection's premise is problematic. In this context, perfect means the pro process and goal. It contains both, not process or goal. Reaching the station of uh, perfect man and uniting with the real is the journey's goal, goal true. But um, perfection is not exhausted when reaching this station, this cosmic reality. The thing to realize is that um, al-insan al-kamil, kamil, perfect, is different from what the word perfect in English indicates. In English, when we say perfect, it means like, well, either it is or it is not. It is not gradational. But uh, when we say the perfect man here, the perfect does not mean that binary form. So perfection is not exhausted when reaching this station, this cosmic reality, i.e. the reality of a uh, perfect man. The perfect man is in the process of eternal perfection, even after reaching the perfect man's station. I repeat, even after reaching this cosmic reality is the perfect locus for divine names. And because the names and God's manifestations are endless, because the names and God's manifestations are endless, the perfect man is eternally becoming the perfect man. The names are endless and this becoming is endless. That's why this objection does not hold about the unknowability of the self. The unknowability of the self in the Islamic tradition is comparable to uh, the Platonist theme. For example, in the Ennads, Plotinus says the self has different levels. Our true self stretches from God to matter. Our real selves are within the intellect, within the divine mind. Our true selves, unlike our selves in the material world, act in total presence, eternity, and simplicity, which is why when we reach our true self, we lose self-awareness and consciousness. We are only conscious of ourselves in this world. This is what uh, Plotinus and his commentator uh, Peter Haddock is saying, uh, are saying. Here we are conscious because we have, consciousness has the duality of the knower and known. I see a book in front of me. I am the knower, the book is known. But in our true selves, because it is in the divine mind, because it's in the intellect, there is no such duality. Therefore, there is no such consciousness. That's why you lose consciousness, you lose self-awareness when you reach that state. This is a fascinating passage, very illuminating. We can only achieve... So how do we reach this? Plotinus says we can only achieve spiritual life, that is, ourselves in the intellect, through intermittent mystical contemplation. So you contemplate, you reach that self, shortly in the beginning you can connect shortly by practice this, this period could be extended Plotinus says while we are in this world this will be only uh, intermittent it will become perfect contemplation uninterrupted contemplation when we pass away therefore conclusion the self is the human's fixed entity anathabita whose aptitudes are eternally unfolding it is an eternal becoming of the perfect man. The self is not reified or fully known. It changes every moment. It is the ever-changing eye of the moment. So that was the conclusion. So what? What does what, what do we learn from this? Uh, well, my take is this. In this spiritual journey, we should not be asking what is the self and expect to discover a to-go answer. It is a dead end. Such truth will not yield to what and how. It is only discovered experientially through mystical contemplation, a meditation in which the self, whatever it is and however it works, functions perfectly. It takes the contemplative to the destination. Therefore, we must set aside what and how. We should submit and we should contemplate. 
we need not know what the self's true nature is. It, that is the self, knows the path anyway. We need not know the self's true nature. It knows the path anyway. And the light, the divine light, enlightens its way. In the beginning, uh, when I started writing this paper, I was looking for something, something reified, something referential, specific. But it was very interesting to me that uh, when I found the answer, when I got to the end, I realized that my whole search was wrong. And the conclusion was very illuminating for me. I hope uh, it was also the case for you. I hope you took away something from this presentation and hopefully uh, this paper. Um, the second part of the paper, which is quite technical, but like I said, I will, I will not be discussing here about the annihilation of God, the Panay Billah. I will create another video for that. Thank you very much for watching um, till the end. I hope, again, this was helpful. I will, by the way, put the link for the paper in the description in case you want to read the paper. Be well, be happy. Hope to see you again in this channel. Have a good day or night, wherever you are, um, whatever time it is you're watching this.